Hi, I'm Claire Kramer, and welcome to today's episode of Awkward Conversations. Today, we are talking about the fact that drug cartels all over the world are mass marketing fake prescription pills that are laced with fentanyl, and these pills are deadly. We're gonna talk all about that and the fact that one pill can kill. But before we get to that, I'd like to welcome our guests, Amy McCarthy, the senior social worker from Boston's Children's Hospital. Hi, Amy. Hey there. Good to be back. Thanks so much. And Wendy Wilcock, the special agent in charge of the Special Operations Division at the DEA. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Claire. Thanks for having me. So, Wendy, One Pill Can Kill. What was the initiative behind that program being developed? Yeah, great question, Claire. And I think uh, I would like to start with saying I've been in law enforcement now for 28 years, and this truly is an epidemic, both as a Dallas police officer and now working for the Drug Enforcement Administration. And when DEA Administrator Ms. Milgram came to DEA, she quickly recognized that uh, people were dying at records amount, record amounts from fentanyl contained within fake pills. So DEA took on an initiative called One Pill Can Kill to remove fake pills from hitting the streets of America. Well, the title itself is a very strong statement, One Pill Can Kill. Tell us about the epidemic. Yeah, so the, the drug trafficking cartels, uh, typically the ones in Mexico that we're all familiar with, uh, Sinaloa cartel and the CJNG cartel, are synthesizing uh, fentanyl in Mexico, making pills, pressing them, uh, having them look like prescription pills, which they are not. They are fake counterfeit pills, and they are shipping them into the United States. What has happened over time is uh, the some people that may have traditionally um, had a prescription and uh, for oxycodone or some other type of opioid. Uh, unfortunately, these um, individuals may have had a substance abuse problem, which has developed into heroin. And as the Mexican cartels uh, decrease the amount of heroin, opi uh, fentanyl, which is much stronger, is coming into the US. So what we have seen is two milligrams of fentanyl alone in one of these fake pills is a deadly dose of fentanyl and uh, can kill an individual. Hence the statement, one pill can kill. Wendy, can you give us a little context of what two milligrams of fentanyl might be? How much is that? So two milligrams of fentanyl would be equivalent to uh, several pieces of, let's say, salt or sugar on the end of a pencil tip. A uh, very, very small amount it can be a lethal dose. And this can be contained within what appears to be a legitimate prescription pill. So the, the message behind that is under no circumstance should you take a pill that appears to be a prescription pill if it is not prescribed to you by a trained medical uh, professional. Yeah. Don't take medicine that isn't prescribed to you. Do not take pills that you don't know their origin. If you didn't pick them up from the pharmacy, if you weren't prescribed them, if they were not directly meant for you, you should not be putting that pill in your mouth. And this is a great reason why. So you're absolutely right, Claire. And I think what's different between uh, today when maybe we were growing up just a couple years ago is uh, the the <laughs> the um, the amount and the lethal dosage. This is not something that any child or any adult should experiment with. Even one pill alone contain a lethal dose. As a matter of fact, the DEA has found that, along with the CDC, that four out of 10 pills uh, can contain a lethal dose. And uh, last year, the CDC states around 108,000 people died of as a result of an unintentional overdose death. So these are scary numbers. This is not something that anyone should take lightly. And um, we need to pay attention. And, and, and I think uh, th this is a true public safety and public health concern. This is not simply a law enforcement problem, and it is definitely not a law enforcement solution. It is a unified effort that needs to be uh, taken on by all of you that are here today. So thank you for helping us educate uh, the, the people and the communities and 
the athletic directors, the spiritual leaders, uh, all of those involved outside of the law enforcement uh, community. DEA alone, not, not counting our other law enforcement partners, in 2021 seized enough fake pills to kill every American. That's what DEA took off the street. Imagine the amount of pills that actually got to the street that were causing harm uh, to the public. So the, the number of pills that are taken off the street, every single one of those pills has some level of fentanyl present in the pill itself. In addition to that, four out of 10 of those pills contain a lethal dose. And the purity level of the fentanyl within the fake pill continues to increase. I'm just kind of blown away that fentanyl is being put in these pills. Wendy, why, why are the criminals putting fentanyl in, this, in these fake prescription medications? So a lot of the cartels are in the drug business to earn a profit. Right? They, are, they are completely driven by profit and greed and power. And the true, the true fact is the cartels can make more off of a kilogram of fentanyl than they can off of a kilogram of cocaine. Unfortunately, fentanyl is much more deadly as we've described, just two milligrams alone can and will kill possibly uh, an individual. So a kilo of fentanyl, for example, can produce around 500,000 pills. At $20 a piece, that's a $10 million profit that the drug cartels are making off of harming and hurting uh, the citizens and the, and the people uh, within the United States versus maybe a $20,000 profit for cocaine. Wendy, why do the cartels, like, if this is such a deadly substance, like, aren't they worried about kind of, you know, their source running out or their, their you know, key demographic? Killing their customers, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, great, great, great question and great point. And unfortunately, that, that does happen. But like with uh, other opioids, you build up a tolerance, right? And which is why I think we are seeing an increased potency and in even the amount of pills that we are seizing and taking off the street. Uh, so... Yeah, great point. But like everything else, there's a tolerance. And again, I don't know that they that they care that they're killing, uh, killing their customers. They are very profit driven. And if you want to even be more disgusted about the you know the activities of these criminals and and how dangerous these pills are, can you describe the process in which these pills are manufactured? These fake fentanyl laced prescription pills. Yes, absolutely. So as we were talking about before, these are not pills that are prescribed to you by a physician and made in a controlled, regulated environment, rather it's here domestically or overseas. These are pills that are being made and uh, in a laboratory within Mexico by the drug cartels in a rat infested, uh, disgusting um, area out in the jungle. And they contain other adulterants outside of fentanyl uh, to press the pill together. So we really don't know what you're getting and nor do you when you take a, what you believe to be a fake fentanyl pill or a pill containing fentanyl. Even if you take it intentionally, there could be something else pressed within that pill that could kill you or cause your body harm. So I think one of the important things, a lot of these pills are sold right over um, social media or some sort of e-commerce platform. I think the, the takeaway for me is you don't know what you're buying, right? And what may appear to be a real pill that can maybe help you, right, if prescribed uh, correctly to you, may contain rat poison, may contain feces, may contain all other kinds of um, adulterants that are harmful to your body outside of fentanyl. Wendy, I think that, you know, something else that we see in, in my work in Boston that is really scary is not only are there, you know, these kind of counterfeit um, opiates that are out there, but we're hearing of reports of, you know, 
uh, uh, tampered with marijuana. We're hearing, you know, reports of vaping nicotine products that are tampered with. Um, and so, you know, I just think about one kill, one pill can kill, but also, you know, this is starting to kind of also seep into other substances that people might think of as more benign, but there can be still some very serious consequences with use. Great point, Amy, and you're and you're absolutely right. Uh, DEA is seizing seizing more and more cocaine that it contains fentanyl, and um, that's a that's a fantastic point to point out that you just don't know. This is not as was pointed out earlier. This is not, uh, hey, I want you know I'm in college, I want to experiment. This is no joke. This is anything and everything that you put in your mouth that you put in your arm could contain a lethal dose of fentanyl. And you really need to think twice uh, before doing it. Educate yourself, rely on others to educate you. And if you don't know and you don't ask, then then please find someone that, that can help you. One of the things that I, that I tell my kids, and as we talk about like uh, building that communication and confidence with your kids, my kids know, and they have since they've been born, that I have a gun and a badge in my purse at all times to protect them. In addition to the gun and badge in, in, uh, in my purse or my bag, I carry with me naloxone. And I make sure that my kids know that in addition to protecting them in the community with uh, my gun and badge, that I also have the anecdote for fentanyl. And I've encouraged them, you know, you, you or some of your friends may make a bad decision, but if you do, you must absolutely come to me and seek help or go to a uh, police officer or a first responder and tell them, regardless uh, of thinking of you may get in trouble or somebody may judge you, you absolutely must tell someone that you believe this person has taken uh, a fake pill and that they could be in jeopardy of dying because we can help and there are solutions. You may not be a first responder, but you may be the only responder and you may be the first person to respond. So if you do not have the training and you do not have naloxone, but you do have your phone, please call 911 and get assistance immediately. So Wendy, if these pills are being manufactured in the jungle in Mexico, they they're not looking like the actual prescription pills manufactured in the U.S. that are that are legal, are they? Quite the contrary. Uh, they they absolutely do look like uh, real pills, which is why, unless it's prescribed to you or given you given to you by a uh, trained medical professional, you should not take them. They look identical. You have to remember, this is a business for the drug cartels. It is highly profitable. It, uh, they use, um, they recruit, right? The drug cartels are recruiting uh, people to transport their drugs. They uh, advertise their drugs. Uh, they market their drugs. They take pride in the fact that their fake pill is more potent than another uh, distributor or, or cartel's uh, fake pill. It's, it's everywhere and it's definitely being very specifically marketed, in my opinion, to um, a younger generation. Uh, some are wrapped in candy packages. Uh, some are advertised in uh, using emojis. Uh, I, a couple, couple cool emojis that we've seen, unfortunately. Uh, you may see a plug, right? Like a plug to a light socket that would say, I'm your plug, I'll hook you up, right? Uh, you may see a rocket, meaning high potency. Uh, you may see a pair of Roxy shorts, meaning, uh, hey, order these shorts in size M30, which would be code for a Oxy M30. So um, very much targeted recruiting, thought of like a business. Yeah, thanks, Wendy. I know that we're going to cover a lot more about these things in the, in the social media episode that's coming up. Wow, Wendy, this is just terrifying as a parent. What, what can we do as parents to protect our kids? So the first thing that you can do is have those awkward conversations with with your kids, right? There, uh, I 
as a mother of three, and all of my kids are right in this vulner vulnerable age group where I uh, they don't want to talk to me all the time. I always want to talk to them. And I think it's very, very important that we educate ourselves. We find common ground with our kids. We find out what appeals to them and find a way to insert our message to them, just like you would with, with any other message that you want to deliver to your kids. Wendy, I think we're in the same position. I have four kids and they're also all at that vulnerable age. I'm trying to get them to communicate. I'm trying to extract information. I've actually found for me, the best way to talk to my kids is when I'm driving because I don't have to have direct eye contact and it makes having that awkward conversation a little bit easier. Do you have any tips just from being a mom, not even with the DEA, just your own experience? How do you get your kids to talk to you? We try really hard to have dinner together. And I think that's a great place. Obviously, it doesn't always work out because as a working mother, I know we're pulled in multiple directions. Uh, but when I catch them with food in their mouth, that's when I generally insert uh, a great talking point and uh, keep going from there and try to, you know, just try to extract information from them. Uh, I try to relate it to something that I know they enjoy, right? And apply, I, I'll hold up, uh, the other day I turned it into a math problem, right? I poured salt in my hand while my son was taking off of his cleats. So he was stuck. He was taking off cleats. I poured salt in my hand and I was talking about fentanyl and I said, okay, how, how many people could, could this kill? And he looked at me puzzled and I'm like, come on, I know you know algebra, get in there. And his response was, well, how many, how many grains of salt are there? And I said, well, let, for the sake of argument, 21. I said, let's say two milligrams, you know, or three milligrams could kill, divide that out for me. And he said, so that amount of fentanyl could kill seven people. And I said, that's right. Don't ever put anything in your mouth. You don't know what it is. And so I look for those very quick snippets. It does not have to be an hour long conversation where you're sitting and looking at each other on the couch being completely uncomfortable. You take it when you can get it. And uh, there's no bad time. There's always a right time. And the right time is now, right? Yeah, as we've said, you know, many times throughout these episodes, it's better to have 60 one minute conversation than one 60 minute conversation. Saving lives means staying informed. Knowing the dangers of using counterfeit prescription pills can help those you care about and keep our community safe. As a parent, educator, neighbor, or friend, we all play a role in building safe and healthy futures for ourselves and our loved ones. Do your part. Take the first step today. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com to access education, prevention, and treatment resources. Counterfeit prescription pills laced with fentanyl are deadly. Be their protector. Be informed. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. And as it often does in this series, it's coming back to that relationship that you as a parent or an educator have with your child or your student and keeping that line of communication open. It, it, you know, I love what you said, Amy, about 60 one minute conversations versus one 60 minute conversation. That's like something that's going to stick in my head for sure. What are some other tips um, that that you guys can give our audience about keeping that communication open? One thing that comes to mind for me is, um, like, like we've been talking about in terms of knowing your child, is understanding their learning style. And so when you understand, you know, is your child a verbal learner? Are they, you know, is writing, is, you know, visuals, like, more helpful to them? And, and take that into account when you're planning on having these kind of conversations, because maybe the conversation isn't as much of a dialogue, like a, a talking dialogue sometimes, as it is writing kind of in a notebook back and forth to each other, or like questions, or, you know, maybe it's bringing visuals into, into the conversation to kind of stimulate their interest. Um, but again, keeping in mind, like knowing them and their needs and how they're going to best receive this information. Yeah. And I think if I can, Amy, I think that's a great point. Uh, the other one that I'd like to make is, is knowing your own limitations and knowing that you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be the person all the time that your child connects with. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's your spouse or significant other, or maybe it's an older sibling who has learned from a mistake or has learned from uh, a friend's mistake that can relate. I often use my kids to communicate my message to 
each other. And sometimes they they uh, tend to receive it a little bit better. So I guess in closing, I just want to reiterate one more time, the only pills you can take are pills that are specifically prescribed for you by your doctor, your dentist, that you yourself pick up from the pharmacy. My husband and I are both federal law enforcement officers. And even though we have the training, the resources, the support system, the knowledge and the expertise to to combat and mitigate this problem, as a mother, I'm scared to death for my kids and their friends and the potential uh, of one of them receiving and or taking a fake pill. And I think everyone else should be too. It's a very serious problem. Wendy, Amy, thank you guys so much. This has been such an educational episode to me. Um, any final thoughts, Wendy? Yeah, thanks, Claire. Uh, again, I'd just like to remind everybody, there is no good time or bad time to talk to your kids. The time is right now, and it's all the time. And uh, along the One Pill Can Kill, if you'd like to learn more about what you can do and what DEA is doing to uh, face this reality that fake pills are killing young kids, go to DEA.gov and search One Pill Can Kill. Thanks for the time. Yes, and all that information, again, is in our show notes of this episode. Amy, any final thoughts? Yeah, no, Wendy, thank you so much for being here. I have learned so much from you today. And for the parents who are listening, the caregivers, this is really scary. And, you know, reach out for support. Reach out, you know, to other parents, to other community organizations, because, you know, we don't want people sitting alone in this fear. And One Pill Can Kill is not just a marketing tagline or a slogan. It is a fact, and it is the reality we live in. It's, I've learned so many invaluable lessons from you today, so thank you so much, both of you. What a great episode. Coming up on the next episode of Awkward Conversations. I've spoken with parents who unfortunately have lost a son or daughter um, to an overdose, and up to a year or more later, they're still finding hiding spots throughout the house that their son or daughter used to hide um, hide their drugs. When you find these substances, it's not the time. Yes, you need to take a step back and figure it out, but, but you gotta address the situation, you know, as quickly as possible. Just a tennis ball. All you need is a razor blade, put a little slit in it, and now you have a little storage container. Um, who's gonna pay attention to, uh, you know, a tube of tennis balls in a bedroom. They're not out of place. And so it's less about the power and control of like you just being able to go in their room because you can. And then more, more just like what we've all said here, it's more about, you know, limits or love. I care about you. Make sure to check out GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. Parents, caregivers, you can find so many resources of great information there about how to talk to your kids and make these conversations a little less awkward. A huge thank you to the Elks DAP, which is the largest all volunteer nationwide drug awareness program and also a huge thanks to the DEA for their outreach program and for making this possible. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Awkward Conversation series are solely those of the individuals, speakers, commentators, experts, and or hosts involved and do not necessarily reflect nor represent those of the production, associates, or broadcaster, or any of its employees. Production is not responsible and does not verify for accuracy any of the information contained in the series available for viewing. The primary purpose of this series is to educate and inform. This series does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. This series is available for private, non-commercial, commercial use only. The production, broadcaster, or its channel cannot be held accountable for all or any views expressed during this program.